Ethical considerations are one of the most important considerations in research in general and in social science research in particular. The increasing use of artificial intelligence or AI in the process and outcome of research studies has made it important for us to think about the possible uh, benefits or pluses of uh, the use of AI in research and also the possible challenges that researchers face, that academics face, that, is, that research students face um, in terms of the ethical um, implications of the use of AI in research. So in this brief presentation, we will discuss, first of all, what are generally ethical considerations. So ethical considerations basically in, in research context are the principles and practices that make the process of research ethical. And so what does that actually mean? That actually means that research should be a process that follows established moral norms and values and those moral norms and values are generally associated with academic or professional research um, in, in a particular field of study. So for example there might be one set of principles in sciences, in hard sciences, there might be another set of principles that we need to follow for when we are conducting research in social sciences. Similarly, there might be other sets of or distinct sets of principles and, um, and values that we need to follow in, conduct, in conducting research in the various fields of social sciences. Now, the aim of keeping ethical considerations in view when we are conducting research is that we need to make the process of research a genuine attempt at, that is aimed at exploring and promoting the cause of scientific knowledge. And this is something that is extremely important. Some of the main um, ethical considerations include, for example, voluntary participation. So as we know that in most social science research, the participants are human participants and it's important that this participation is voluntary and it is not forced or that it is not uh, something that is against the will of the participants. Secondly, informed consent. The participants need to know um, that they are giving consent based on information related to, for example, the research topic or the research process or the way they are participating or what, are, what, what is being expected of them in terms of participation in the research process. So informed consent or consent that is based on a well-informed decision is something that is important. Thirdly, ethical considerations also include the consideration for keeping the uh, research participants anonymous in, uh, in, in certain research studies and in other cases, there is, there is need for safeguarding the confidentiality or ensuring the confidentiality of the research participants. So anonymity actually means that even in, in, in most cases, the researcher basically does not know the individual participants who are taking part in the research process. In confidentiality, generally, that is generally required in qualitative research where the researcher individually knows the participants and their identities, but they actually make it sure that the individual identities um, of the participants are protected and so they are not identified in the research process or in the research report. So that's confidentiality. That is also an important ethical considerations. consideration. Thirdly, fourthly, safety of the, of the participants is something that is quite important. So it is important for researchers to conduct ethical research that they should ensure the physical safety of the participants, their psychological safety, their economic safety, their social security or social safety, and so on. So in every way, it is important for researchers to safeguard the, uh, the 
the, actually the interests and to make sure that the participants are safe from any harm during or after the process of research. And lastly, ethical considerations also include, and most importantly, it is that the research should be conducted based on a genuine research process, that is research design, and also the reporting of the whole research process, including its findings and conclusions and recommendations, etc., are genuine. And so they are actually uh, coming out of the data that the researcher has collected and has authentically analyzed that data, and then the report is authentic and truly representative of the problem and the data that has come as a result in its analysis. So genuine conduct and reporting of the research is something that is also an important ethical consideration. Now we move on to the second part of it, that is ethical consider considerations in research where there is use of AI in the process or outcomes of research. So generally AI in academic research is used uh, to refer to technologies or to tools that can perform human-like tasks. And so that actually means that such tasks require the use of intelligence, for example, uh, human-like intelligence, including the use of perception, the use of judgment and thinking and reasoning, and also the use of decision-making. So AI technologies that can actually work intelligently they, that, that can actually perceive things properly, they, they can make judgments based on reasoning, and they can make decisions um, independently based on the data that, that they get and the, the process uh, through which they pass data, and as a result, the whole decision-making process is kind of, you can say, intelligent decision-making. So, a, secondly, AI tools are tools or systems that actually learn from data and adapt or shape or um, so, in, so, so they intelligently shape and evolve over, over, a, over, the, over a period of time or uh, with increasing data access. Now AI is, is actually increasingly being used in academic research. And that is why the ethical considerations, the list of ethical considerations now include considerations related to the use of AI in research. Now in what ways is actually AI used in social science research? So there are many ways, there are several ways in which AI has been increasingly used <clears throat> in social science research. For example, it is used um, uh, or it can be used in uh, developing or generating research ideas. So in many cases, research students or researchers in general can, um, can actually rely on the AI tools uh, or technologies to generate ideas or research ideas, uh, innovative ideas or complex ideas. Secondly, AI is also useful in terms of helping us uh, in developing and refining our research questions or research hypotheses, and it can help us in developing our research objectives. It can also help us in uh, rationalizing our research choices. Then uh, AI is also can be used in terms of, and, and it is widely used um, in the literature review part of uh, studies, and in gap analysis, so it can help us in terms of identifying literature, in, in terms of identifying sources of literature and background. It can help us in, uh, you can say, analyzing literature, synthesizing literature. Um, it can help us uh, generating ideas related to the background of the topic that we are working on. AI can also be used in terms of gap analysis um, if we provide it with the sources uh, and let it um, do some analysis for us. Um, then fourthly, AI can also help us in terms of making methodological choices or in making, <clears throat> in making decisions related to the research design choices. So for example, if you are working on a particular topic, 
Um, and in a particular context, and so if you give that topic and that context to AI and to ask it to actually to ask these tools or technologies to suggest uh, useful methodologies or research designs, uh, for example, is uh, data collection tools or data analysis tools or softwares. Um, in some cases, you can also take help from from uh, these tools in terms of. Uh, report writing and or refining reports that you have written. So you can say that AI is, um, co is could be quite helpful in terms of coming up with or helping or assisting us in refining our research methodologies in making choices in and also in terms of data analysis, in terms of report writing, in terms of refining the reports that we have already written. Uh, but the use of AI is not uh, without uh, any problems. Uh, so uh, the increasing use of AI in social science research, especially by junior researchers or student researchers, can have several issues as well. For example, um, the first bigger issue could be over-reliance on AI. So in many cases, uh, many student researchers, junior researchers, uh, think it uh, more convenient to directly go to AI and um, to actually rely on it rather than actually to uh, dig deeper into the issue that they are exploring and as a result or reliance on it will um, be a kind of hampering the process of research and it could also lead to secondly to su superficial understanding of the research process or topic and it could also lead to superficial um, exploration of issues that need more thorough investigation. Um, next is that uh, AI itself has certain AI biases or preferences. For example, in terms of coming up with data, in terms of um, analyzing data, in terms of uh, coming up with certain conclusions in terms of certain ideological inclinations that are already there in the, uh, in the, in the setup of the machine. Uh, so these are some of the things that can cause problems in, in terms of uh, impacting objectivity, in terms of uh, impacting authenticity of the research process. Uh, fourthly, uh, validity and reliability issues. Again, this is something um, that can that could be impacted if we uh, over rely on artificial intelligence. If there is, if we deal with things superficial, superficially, if we as researchers do not uh, take the trouble to triangulate the process of research to get um, to the topic through more than one ways um, and to have an, a superficial understanding, and so that actually can lead to the process of research that may, might be less valid or less reliable. So validity and reliability could be another issue that we can face with the increasing use of AI. So, and then fifth is that in many cases AI uh, could lead us to inauthentic data or inauthentic data sources. And so if we do not confirm those sources, if we do not work hard, to find, to get to the real or authentic sources, especially to first, um, you can say first-hand sources, um, then uh, AI, as I said, could be used in the process of analysis. But in many cases, the analysis could be superficial, it could be biased, or it, it could be, you can say, there could be some subjectivity in that analysis as well. And lastly, in terms of report writing as well, we should not entirely rely on AI. Um, so I think there should be a good combination or, and you can also say that it is our own natural intelligence and our, our own authentic understanding that should actually lead. And so just take assistance from the AI. Now, the last part of it is that uh, generally, a good use of, so, so the question is how to make good use of AI in, in social science research. So generally, I would suggest that uh, we can say it should be a balanced, a good combination of our real intelligence and the artificial intelligence or our human intelligence. So it should be a more, like a good balance of the human-machine interaction. Generally, 
So AI should be used as a means to an end rather than an end in itself. Secondly, um, we need to make informed and good uh, use of AI. We need to know about the limitations and the strengths of AI. We also need to know about our own biases, the possible biases of the AI. And so that will make us, uh, uh, will help us make informed use of AI. Then if we totally rely on AI, which is like um, more like a mechanical system, that would be something like a blind man holding the hand of another blind man. Uh, if uh, we do not take the trouble to explore in depth by going into the real sources of data and information. Um, another important way in which we can actually make good use of or effective use of AI in our research is triangulation. So we need to triangulate our data sources, we need to triangulate data analysis processes, we need to triangulate the, uh, uh, you know, like the, the report writing or the conclusion that we draw from our research. So triangulation or you can say confirmation of the of the data and the findings and the conclusions from more than one source is something that is extremely important. And lastly, <clears throat> we need to take ownership um, of the research process. We should not totally give a hand over the research process to the AI tools. So taking ownership of the research process, uh, making it more authentic. And so the process and outcome of research will be more authentic, we will be more in ownership of the process when we have a good combination, a balance, and when we are actually making intelligent use of the AI in the, uh, in the process, in the outcome, and in terms of developing the aims of research. So the use of AI is, is uh, not a bad thing in our research process. It's generally, it's, uh, you can say, is quite uh, an integral part of the modern process of education in general and in research in particular. But what is needed is intelligent use of the, or you can say the use of your real intelligence side by side with artificial intelligence as researchers and as research students.